A special type of discrete probability distribution is what's called a binomial probability. So what we're going to do here is calculate the probabilities of a binomial experiment. First, what is a binomial distribution? A binomial distribution has a couple characteristics. First, there is a fixed number of trials. Maybe we're doing 10 tests. The trials are independent and repeated over and over again. And what's really important is each trial has two outcomes. Of those 10 tests, we either were successful or we fail. We use P to represent the probability of a success and Q to represent the probability of failure, which is just 1 minus P. And so the question we're trying to answer is to find the probability we get a certain number of successes out of a certain number of trials. Maybe I want to be successful 4 out of 10 times. The formula we use to calculate a binomial is the probability that we get R successes is a combination, n choose R, times the probability of success to this R power, that gives us the number of successes, times the probability of failure raised to the n minus R power, that gives us the number of failures. Sometimes we're asked to find the probability of having maybe less than five successes. If I want to have less than five successes, we would add the individual probabilities together. The probability of four plus the probability of three plus the probability of two plus the probability of one plus the probability of zero going all the way down. If we want to find the probability of more than a certain number, we add all the numbers together. The probability, if I want to find the probability of more than five successes, it would be the probability of six plus the probability of seven plus the probability of eight all the way up to the top. With more than, it's usually easier to calculate 1 minus the probability of the complement. So we'll take a look at what that looks like with some of our examples. First, let's say a factory finds that 5% of the widgets it makes are defective. It's important to note here that when we refer to a success, success has no moral value. In this case, since we're talking about defective parts, a defective part is considered a success. So 5% of the time, we get a success. So in a sample of 20, we want to find the probability of one defective widget. So if we want to find the probability that the number of successes is equal to 1, or r equals 1, we'll take a combination. Out of 20, we're going to choose exactly one of them, times our probability of success, which is 0.05 raised to the number of successes we want, 1, times the probability of failure, which is 0.95, 1 minus 0 0.5, 0 0.05, raised to the number of failures we want, 19. Now a combination you'll remember we calculate with factorials, 20 factorial over 20 minus 1, 19 factorial times 1 factorial times 0 0.05 raised to the first power, times 0.95 raised to the 19th power. And we can do that on our calculator. The combination is going to reduce down to just 20. So we have 20 times 0 0.05 raised to the first power, times 0.95 raised to the 19th power. We end up with a probability of 0.3774. It's the probability we get exactly 1 out of 20 defective widgets. Now, if I want the probability of less than 2 defective widgets, less than 2 means I could have 1 defective widget, or I could have 0 defective widgets. Now, we already calculated the probability of 1 as 0.3774. We just need to finish by calculating the probability of 0 which is a combination of 20 to 0 times success, which is 0 0.05. We want 0 successes times failure, which is 0 0.95. And we want 20 successes. Combination 20 to 0 is going to be 20 factorial divided by 20 factorial times 0 factorial. That's going to simplify to 1 times 0 0.05 to the first times 0.95, I'm sorry, times 0.05 to the 0 power, times 
0.95 to the 20th power. And when we do that on the calculator, we get 0.3585. So the probability of less than 2, we're going to add these two values together. So I'll take the 0.3774 plus 0.3585. My total probability is 0.7359. It's the probability of less than 2 defective widgets. What if I want the probability of more than one defective widgets? Well, more than one means the probability of two plus the probability of three plus the probability of four all the way up to 20. That's going to be a lot of work to calculate that manually. And so what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the complement, which is one minus the probability. And the opposite of more than one means r is less than or equal to one. Or you could think about that as probability that r is less than 2. Well, what's nice about this is we just calculated the probability that it's less than 2. So we'll put that into our equation, 1 minus the probability of less than 2, which is 0.7359, which gives us a probability of 0.264. One, there's a, just over a 26% chance that there is more than one defective widget out of 20. Now, Excel can make these calculations easier as normal. The binomial distribution on Excel has several parts. First, we'll say equals binom.dist for binomial distribution. The first number is going to represent the number of successes we want. Next number is the number of trials we want, comma. The next number is the probability of any one success, comma. And then we'll type in either true or false. If we do true, it's going to do cumulative and add all the numbers below our value, including our value. If we say false, it'll just give us the probability of our specific value. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So here we have the exact same problems we just solved. The factory finds 5% of our widgets are defective. Sample of 20, we want to know the probability of exactly one defective widget. To get exactly one, we'll say equals binome.dist, open a parenthesis. We want the number of successes, which is exactly one, comma, the number of trials, which was 20, comma, the probability of any one success, which is 0.05, comma, and then it wants to know should we add up everything beneath it as well. We want to know exactly one, so we'll say false, which means don't add up everything beneath it. Just give us the value at one. And we get three, seven, seven rounds to four, just like we found when we did it. Now, if I want the probability of less than two, now I know we're talking about 1 or 0. We're adding everything beneath it. So we'll do the same thing, equals binomial.distribution, open a parenthesis. The first success we want counted is at 1, because we want less than 2. That does not include 2. Starting at 1, going down, comma, the number of trials is still 20, comma, the probability of any one success is 0.05, comma. This time we're going to say true because we want to add everything beneath it. When we hit enter, we get 0.7358, which with a round off error is about the same as we got previously. For the probability of more than one defective widget, for more than one, again, we're going to do the complement because the Excel formula only gives us everything less than the value. To get more than, we'll say equals 1 minus the binome.distribution, comma, the number of successes. This is going to be the first number that's excluded. If we want more than 1, that's going to start counting at 2, which means the first number excluded is 1. Out of 20 trials, the probability of success is 0 0.05. 
comma, we're going to say true because we want to add everything beneath that in this part. And when we hit enter, we get 0.2642 as our probability that more than one is defective, which is within a round off error of a value we had from before. So hopefully this video is useful to you as you calculate the probability of various binomial experiments. Try some of these out on your own and I wish you the best of luck.